You know what people love? Cat videos. Ever since the dawn of the internet, people have been going nuts over cat videos. But where did people go to get their feline fix in the before times? Well, the answer might surprise you. Broadway! Yeah, that's right. Broadway, the promised land for anyone who loves live theater. And they've got a little bit of something for everyone. Want to see a play about gangsters in the 1930s? There are several. How about a show where a guy sells his soul to the devil so his favorite baseball team can beat the Yankees in the World Series? Well, they've got one! Rated R Sesame Street? Got you covered. Did you ever want to see a scene-by-scene -scene remake of Disney's The Lion King performed by people in elaborate costumes and puppets? Well, take the sky, dress him like a lion. How about a show about a guy who fucks horses? That exists. I guess Broadway does what Holly wouldn't. There's even a musical making fun of that. It's called The Producers, and it's about two guys who decide to put on a musical called I Shit You Not, Springtime for Hitler. And it becomes a huge hit. So it's really not surprising that Broadway would run a musical like Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cats. Cats was a huge hit on Broadway, running for 18 straight years, a record that would only be beaten by another Andrew Lloyd Webber musical, Phantom of the Opera. Critics loved it. Audiences loved it. So this might be an unpopular opinion, but I wasn't a huge fan. Now, I don't hate it, but it just doesn't do it for me. Let me explain. A lot of Broadway musicals are based on something, like a book or a film. Using just Andrew Lloyd Webber's other works as examples, you've got Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat and Jesus Christ Superstar, both based on biblical tales. Because I guess there was just huge demand for Bible-based musicals. The people were like, man, you know what I would love? If somebody took chunks of the Bible and sang it at us, and Andrew Lloyd Webber was there to answer the call. The Phantom of the Opera, Webber's biggest hit, was based on the 1910 novel of the same name by French author Gaston Leroux. It's a good read, and I highly recommend it if you manage to get your hands on a copy. Webber also based Cats on another work, but whereas Dreamcoat, Superstar, and Phantom are based on stories that have flowing narratives, Cats is based on a collection of poems by T.S. Eliot called Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. Since it was a collection of poetry describing a breed of cats called the Jellicles, and then poetry about specific cats telling their story, there's really no kind of plot here. So Weber added his own. The plot is that every year the Jellicles throw a party called the Jellicle Ball at a London junkyard. At the end of the ball, the king of the Jellicles, Old Deuteronomy, will select one lucky cat who gets to ascend to the heavy side lair, i.e. kitty heaven, and be reborn. So... The entire show consists of different cats coming up and explaining to Old Deuteronomy why they deserve to die. That's fucking dark. So basically, the cats sing their poems from the book to introduce themselves and state their case. There's Thief Cats, Fat Cat, Tap Dancing Cat, Rock and Roll Cat, and a Magician Cat. Then there's this cat, Grizabella. No one likes her because she's basically homeless. Because if there's one thing cats love, it's class warfare. Ha! You're poor. Get a job! Memories all alone in the moonlight. Right from the start, you can tell she's going to be the winner, especially after she sings her big solo number, Memories. Even if you don't know the show Cats, chances are you've heard that song. It's all about how in the past she was the most beautiful of cats and everyone loved her. I find it funny that the former beautiful high society cat's name is Grizabella, personally. It's like the kind of name I would give to a cat with one eye and half its ear missing that I lured out of a dumpster with a can of tuna. Yaw, oh, who's a cute little kitty? Who's the cutest little kitty? You are! I'm gonna name you Scumfuck! There's also a subplot where an evil cat named McCavity is trying to crash the party and ends up kidnapping old Deuteronomy. But that's resolved almost immediately, because during his big song, magician cat Mr. Mistopheles magics him back into existence. And that happens almost immediately after the kidnapping. And therein lies my biggest problem with this show. There is no real sense of conflict. 
We know the answer to the show's biggest question about ten minutes in. You can act all surprised that Grizabelle is the one to be chosen for death and ascension, but I'll call you a liar. McCavity kidnaps old Deuteronomy, but that's resolved literally minutes later. The only thing really keeping the show interesting for me is the music, because pretty much every song is a friggin' earworm. Also, my insane conspiracy theory. No one asked for it, no one wanted it, but I'm giving it to you anyway. McCavity and Mr. Mistopheles are the same cat. I mean, think about it. They're never seen in the same place at the same time. They're both described as having magical powers, even though in both cases it's probably just sleight of hand. McCavity shows himself to be a master of disguise, because just after the kidnapping, he disguises himself as Old Deuteronomy. And the most damning evidence. Mistopheles conjures Old Deuteronomy using a magician's trick where you swap one person for another under a blanket. It's a very common trick. And it means he must have had Deuteronomy on hand to perform the trick in the first place. And what better way to cheat the system for a master criminal than to create a problem than neatly provide the solution? Surely, surely, the cat that saved old Deuteronomy from the clutches of the evil McCavity would be fast-tracked for ascension. This is the face of evil! So, yeah, overall, I don't get the huge hype built up around this show. It's cute, it's fun, but it doesn't really tell an interesting story. Any plot that is crammed in there is just filler in between the musical and dance numbers. You could have completely removed the plot about Grizabella and Deuteronomy's kidnapping, and not much would have changed. This feels less to me like a Broadway musical and more like a two-hour-long cat video. But instead of this, you get this. I do have a soft spot for it, though. It was my first experience with a Broadway musical. They did a televised performance back in the 90s and then sold VHSs. And my first ever acting coach at the YMCA suggested that all of her students watch it, so my mom bought me a copy. I must have watched it like a hundred times, because this show really grabs the attention of an eight-year-old, I guess. Anyway, I've been Tom, and thanks for watching Tom again.